groundbreaking ceremony for a new factory. Did you mention seeing anyone who was sick? Anyone on a plane at the airport? No, she said she was jet lagged. The average person touches their face three to five times every waking minute. In between, we're touching doorknobs, water fountains, and each other. Matt! No, no, uh, uh, go up to your room, honey. So we have a virus with no treatment protocol and no vaccine at this time. You had a seizure this morning, Beth. She had a history of seizures. No, no, no. no. Allergy. As of last night, there were 32 cases. Unfortunately, she did die. Of course, that was from the movie Contagion. We will talk with Dr. Joe Numa, Chief Toxicologist at Superior Toxicology. So that's what we'll yak about today. What's up, everybody? I'm David Yak here for Yak About Today. You know, when I'm out and about or at a dinner or a gathering, I'm always fascinated by your opinions, thoughts, and questions. And before I sit down in front of this mic, I look for answers to your questions, share your thoughts, and bring you the latest information from the best people I can find. So if all this is of interest to you, then this is the place you want to be. So get up, put your headphones on, go for a run, and listen to what we yak about today. And we are back. I've got Dr. Joe Newsmer. He is the CEO and Chief Toxicologist at Superior uh, Toxicology and Wellness, an international scientific consulting firm that he also founded. Uh, Thanks for joining me, Joe, or Dr. Joe. What do you like to be called? You can call me Dr. Joe. That's (laughs) fine, David. Nice to be here. Thank you for having me. All right, Dr. Joe. You know what we're going to talk about? I'm guessing it's going to be the coronavirus. All right. So um, let me try to shorten this question the best I can. So if you're watching the news right now and you have the television on, I mean, this is a 24-hour news cycle about the coronavirus. And in those 24 cycles, they repeat certain things. It is a virus that seems to be easier to catch than the flu virus. They are saying that um, it has a death rate twice that, at least, as far as they know, of the flu virus. They are telling you that it will affect seniors with underlying conditions, right? Therefore, these are what they are recommending. They are recommending seniors never to leave their home again, (laughs) right? Uh, They are recommending that every time you go out, you keep yourself at a distance of about six feet. They are saying that you should wash your hands till they're raw on a regular basis. No matter what you do, you come home. You never touch your face and don't go see relatives. You know, stay in your household, all that. I think what the question I'm really... Um, I want to ask, and I, I think you're the best person to, one of the best people to ask it of, is, is this something in your understanding and the knowledge we have so far, is this a change in lifestyle that goes not only for a few weeks, a few months, but is this something that's going to change the world as we know it um, for a year, many years? What is your take on this? I don't think it's going to change the world for years. I don't think it's going to change the world for a year. 
I think that uh, in the immediate future, if we flatten the curve on how this infectious virus, and you're right, it is easier to catch than most other viruses. It's designed that way. Uh, you can almost call it a bioweapon. But I think that this breakout will die down and go away, and it'll just be right in the closet with the rest of the viruses like SARS and MERS and Ebola. Once in a while, it'll rear its ugly head. You have to deal with it temporarily. But right now, in the initial breakout, there's going to be a lot of people that get infected and uh, you just have to take those protective mechanisms and uh, be smart. Don't do anything stupid. So is this something, so you're saying this might not be follow the track of like a flu. All of a sudden it sort of disappears in, what is it? April, May, May, June, and then rears its ugly head in September every year. And they'll eventually, I, I suppose, have a vaccine, Right. Is that vaccine like a flu vaccine? Every September we take the pneumonia vaccine, the shingles vaccine, the flu vaccine, the uh, c corona or um, coronavirus vaccine. That type there of may be a coronavirus vaccine. It depends on whether or not they can get a stable target in the protein coat of the virus so that uh, they have something that they can aim that vaccine against to stop the spread or the replication of the virus. So uh, they have found some therapeutic avenues of uh, different antivirals that are curbing this one. Uh, there is a chance that there's going to be a, a vaccine developed. And then, yes, it would be just like a flu vaccine where they pick the the strains that may come out or the pneumonia vaccine where they pick the strains that may come out and uh, they tell everybody to go get that and that's why it's a every year basis because uh, they look at data and try to pick the best strains for the flu that's coming out but right now the infectivity of the coronavirus is like no other because it's designed to get into the human body so that um the body will get after this virus. And, and the thing that's so serious for seniors, David, is uh, the fact that uh, it gets into your respiratory system very easily because the host receptor that it uses to get into the cells is, is very plentiful in your nose and your airways and your lungs. And if you mount that inflammation response there and uh, your body gets that inflammation response off track, then you get what's called a cytokine storm and your immune system takes you down. Basically, it's, uh, it's like pneumonia because your lungs fill up with fluid and you can't recover from that. That's why seniors are at such risk for this particular virus. It's very infectious. And if there's any underlying condition that's respiratory or cardiovascular in nature, it sets them up to, it sets them up to be fed, uh, just, I mean, it kills you. And that's why the, the death rate is so high in that 70 and over population. So you really have to be careful. The best defense is not getting this virus in the first place. And some of those, so go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say there are two. One's a statement and one's a, a, a question. Um, I've been asthmatic my whole life. And I gather I'm one of those people that really should not find myself beyond the perimeter of my house. Yeah. <laughs> well, just choose where you go carefully. Okay. So, but I, and I think the second uh, question is, it, so, so let's say you're a perfectly healthy 80-year-old. I mean, if there is such a thing, I, I'm imagining, I, we yeah. know people in their mid-90s who seem to have health and, right. you know, that type of thing. And both of my parents are 80 years old. Okay. So if, to them, you would say, Look, you just follow the same rules we've set for all other age groups, or are you still taking them out and saying, look, because of age, you won't, I mean, if you get it strictly because of your age, you may have a difficult time, um, even though you don't have underlying uh, conditions. No, I think uh, regardless of someone's age, if they are healthy, then they're going to have a better than normal chance to fight this virus because the virus creates an inflammation reaction. And if your body can fight that inflammation, then you're going to be fine. And it's with the anti-inflammatories and just keeping your immune system functioning optimally that gives you the best chance to fight this virus. And you get that from making sure you get enough sleep making sure that you're fairly active with some exercise, making sure that you have a good diet. And what I say, and as far as the diet, uh, in order to ensure a good diet, the mantra that I try to follow is eat half 
and mostly plants. And then you're going to be okay because you're going to get what you need. And if you're not getting that, you know, I push one product that helps keep the immune system in check. It's called C60 Complete. And it's, it's uh, carbon 60, it's black seed oil, and it's curcumin. And those two natural products combined with the antioxidant capacity of carbon 60 keeps your immune system on track. It gives it the tools that are necessary to make sure you're functioning optimally. And then you won't get that cytokine storm, which is what's killing people with the coronavirus because the inflammation reaction won't get out of, out of whack. That's a scientific term. It, the body keeps the brakes on that inflammation reaction. And if you are set up with being in good physical shape and getting the rest you need and staying hydrated and getting good nutrition, you know, you add C60 complete to that, then you're going to have a better than average chance of surviving the coronavirus. Both of my parents are 80 years old. They're both on that product. My dad has uh, some pulmonary fibrosis that he's dealing with. And my mom is probably two years out of a heart attack, but they're both doing fantastic right now. My mom just had her second knee replaced. So um, they're irritated to no end that their bowling league has been canceled. <laughs> right. Let's talk about the product. Um, okay. It, but now you have to, now you, you know, you have to speak English. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. So um, the, the C60 is a product that is generally out there, is a product that your company developed. Uh, what is uh, it exactly? No, it's not a product that, that my company developed. It was developed by Live Longer Labs. Mm -hmm. So it's livelongerlabs.com. I was the first credentialed scientist that wrote a part on why that product is good, why it works, and what it does for the body. And what that product does is it soaks up all the oxidative stress in your body. Oxidative stress is a side effect of breathing. So anybody that's breathing is generating these little oxygen radicals in the body. And... Uh, C60 is the world's best antioxidant. It's like 127 times better than vitamin C. So what it does when you're taking C60 is it takes care of all the oxidative stress in your body so that your body has more resources to deal with any other problems. And your body knows what the biggest problem is that you have to fight. And your body puts those resources to what it's designed to do, which is heal. So if you're functioning properly, in your health and your wellness, then your body will take care of what it needs to take care of. If that's, you know, resetting how your body deals with insulin because you're pre-diabetic or diabetic, that's what it goes to. If you have macular degeneration, you know, uh, then that's what it, it fixes your eyes. If you have cardiovascular issues, it takes care of your blood pressure. And uh, the, the combination of the antioxidant properties of C60 with the combined natural properties and organ protective properties of the black seed oil and the curcumin, both of those products have been used for hundreds and hundreds of years in the uh, herbal medicine practices of the Far East. So it's not, it's, it's not something that Western medicine has discovered yet. But the guys that live longer labs have patented this particular formulation. And when they filed their patent, there was four papers on that combination. And now, there's 4,000 and there's more patent applications and it's all the big pharma companies that have uh, decided that this is a good combination. So livelongerlabs.com, I wrote a paper for the non-scientific and for the scientific. So based on your comfort zone, you can learn about that product at livelongerlabs.com. But that's the one that I put my 80-year-old parents on. And my mom just had her second knee replacement. The first knee, she had it without that product. The second knee, she had it with the product and she saw a lot less pain and inflammation and swelling and she's progressed on her recovery the second time around so uh my dad is is seeing some improvement in his recovery time on uh his oxygen saturation he wears an oxygen machine and he still he takes it off to go bowl he takes it off to go out to the mailbox and what used to take him a half hour to recover is now taking him about five minutes so um, I can't say enough good things about C60 Complete, and uh, I think it's great. Every senior in the whole country should be on it. I will definitely look into that. Um, isn't it, it's a funny question, isn't it unusual for scientists to be speaking so highly of sort of holistic type medicines? 
Yes, it is. Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, I have a PhD and I've made a lot of money supporting the pharmaceutical industry for over 30 years. But I think pharmaceutical products are evil. They destroy lives and they, they, you take something for one thing, but it does 13 other things in your body. The mantra in the pharmaceutical industry is today's side effects lead to tomorrow's therapies. So these people design drugs to have an effect on the human body. And a lot of good is done by these pharmaceutical products, but there's a lot of debilitating effects. And you know that if you ever see a drug commercial on TV, when you get the really fast talker that talks about all kinds of things that will happen to you if you take this drug product. Every product's just short of dying. You know, yeah. you can have every condition if you take the product, which cures yeah. one condition, but can cause <laughs> every other condition known to man. And that's why I developed my program that I call HOPE. You know, it's a health optimization prescription evaluation. And because, face it, the average senior is on six to eight medications. And they're on one medication for the initial condition. And then they're on the second medication for the side effects of the first medication and so on and so forth. So what I have found is that the, the seniors that are seeing more than one doctor, because they, they, all the doctors specialize, none of the doctors look at what else they're on and uh, figure out if what they're going to put them on is uh, copacetic with what they're already on. They rely on the pharmacists and they rely on the profile to kick up drug interactions. And no one ever takes the time that, that people deserve to be talked about about their drug therapies. And these physicians, they have a semester of pharmacology. So they don't have any idea what these drugs are doing in combination. So someone like myself that's got 30 years in the drug business as a toxicologist, you know, on my website, I have a spot, a, a form people can fill out and send me the drugs they're on, the doses they're on, and the, the uh, length of time they've been on those drugs. And I'll uh, evaluate those for folks and give them recommendations on whether or not they really even need to be on those drug products. And I tell you what, David... Every single one of those analyses that I've done, I have found drug interactions that absolutely take away from the quality of life of these people that are on these multiple drugs. I call it polypharmacy. And nobody needs to tolerate that. If you just have those evaluated and then you take those questions back to your physician or healthcare provider, whoever it might be, and uh, then you can get your life back. You can take command of your health and wellness and you can be in control again in a position where before you just feel like there's no control, a lack of control. And it's it's that service that I... I I really like helping the folks with uh, getting off of some potential drugs. And I've done it for my mom. I've done it for my dad. I've done it for my in-laws. I've done it for my, my, uh, my whole family. And, you know, it's just the, the people that, that get their life back are so appreciative of that particular service because they're like, I'm on all these drugs and I don't know why. And I can't get enough time with my doctor to have him tell me, well, even if you got time with your doctor, more likely than not, your doctor wouldn't know. He'd have to go back to his office and look all this stuff up and figure out what to say. So that's why I offer that service. And but then you combine the two with C60 and the HOPE analysis. Is, and then it's, uh, let, so let me ask you, because I think you, you've got something important. You have an actual website that people can go to. They can put down all their drugs that they are taking. And I suppose they're putting down all their ailments that they're taking the drugs for. They should, yes. And then it's analyzed by your group who gets back to them and says, look, you know, these are in contra, what do they call contraindications or I don't even that, know what that, that well, means. Con yeah, contraindications is like you shouldn't be taking this drug if you have these conditions. Oh, but okay. what I normally find are drug interactions. Drug interactions. Like the drugs get together and then A plus B doesn't equal C, it equals like F because of a synergistic effect or something like that. It's a, it's interesting. It's an interesting conversation because you know, as you know, this uh, show is geared to the what we call the wiser and more mature of us. I agree um, with you. <laughs> and in my conversations, you know, the basic conversations you have in senior communities or senior get-togethers is they're always talking about what doctors you use, right? Uh, I use so and so, and everybody obvious. Not obviously, but many, many more senior people have multiple doctors for multiple reasons. Each doctor is prone to throw a drug at somebody. 
It's the, what I found in my experience, you could have a minor case of upset stomach and they'll give you some new drug that costs $15,000 a month, you know, to, to yeah, settle because your they stomach. Get, they get paid for writing those prescriptions. Right. But anyway, so the, the idea here is obviously drugs do a lot of good because, you know, a lot of people are living past 50 because every ailment that seems to come up, a drug is developed for. And what you're saying is, and let me get this right, because I think it's a strong accusation. In the development of these drugs for these illnesses, they're not purifying it enough or they're putting something in that has side effects. And the side effects cause you to get other drugs to cure the side effects and they themselves will have side effects. Did I just get that right or wrong? Or Well, it's, it's not a matter of impurities or uh, other things that are in the drug. It's just the drug that people take have different effects on different parts of the body. I mean, one of the classics is the Propecia. It's a drug that is for male pattern baldness. That drug was originally marketed for prostate cancer. During the clinical trials, the men that were taking that drug started growing hair everywhere. So they said, huh, well, let's market this for baldness. And they've made more money on the baldness application than the prostate cancer application. Do they still use it for prostate cancer? They probably have better drugs. Right. Um, we're running out of time. You know, I have an idea because I, th I think there's, there's a conversation here that I think is going to be ongoing for the, at least the next uh, several months. And I know my audience is constantly not only looking for advice, you know, on the on the coronavirus, but also in the senior community, people need to understand the drugs they take, right? Why they take them in different conditions. So I'm hoping you'll join us again um, at another time, and maybe uh, we'll put this out as both a radio show podcast and a video cast. Uh, David, so people I'd be can happy see to you. join you again. I'd be happy to join you again. And I don't know if I said where they can find that. Oh, hope. please. I'm sorry. That should have been my job. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's on superiortoxicology.com. And you just look for the hope button. And uh, the hope again stands for health optimization prescription evaluation. And superiortoxicology.com is where you find the drug analysis. Livelongerlabs.com is where you can find that C60 product. And if you hit the contact me sheet, I'm happy to answer as many questions as people have. And uh, please be patient because there's a lot of them. Right. Again, Joe, thanks. And by the way, thanks for doing my job just now. <laughs> and oh, no, you, no I worries. didn't ask you to get your information out, <laughs> but you did. All right. I really appreciate it. And um, we're going to see you, I think, often and shortly. All right. Thanks so much. As we come to the close of another week of Yak About Today, I want to thank you again for listening. Remember, you can go to yakabouttoday.com to listen to any of our shows, or if you are new here and listening to one of the podcast networks that carry us, consider subscribing. And remember, you can write to us at david at yakabouttoday.com or follow us on Facebook or Twitter at Yak About Today. I'm David Yak here, and I hope that we can chat next time. Same place, anytime you're free to listen. Peace. And when you finish doing that, bring in the dog without the cat. Don't talk back. <laughs>